This is your Uncle Tree Jam, and we are back with Mass Effect 2. Last time we fought our way across the Son of Dantes' Tower Bridge and finally found ourselves face to face with the Asari we met in Mass Effect 1. She assumed that we were there to kill her, but realized too late that Thane Krios was a real threat. When Asana dead, they decided to apply his skills as an assassin towards his next mission, helping us stop the Collectors. So for the time being, now that Thane Krios has joined the ranks of our crew, we have yet another person we can utilize for our missions, but without any ado, without any further delay, we need to get right into crew debriefs. We got a little bit to chew through in this episode because Thane Krios is a new crew member, so we're going to have a lot of dialogue to climb through. Well, maybe not too much, but just enough to keep in mind and just enough to pull the notepads out for. But we have a submachine gun damage upgrade. That'll keep us you know, somewhat happy in the future with our Locust. But for the time being, let's talk to Kelly Chambers and see what our yeoman has to say. I'm surprised by Thane's spiritual side. His psych profile mentioned little of it. And he carries himself with such cold confidence. I'm not sure if I find him scary or sexy. A lot of women like bad boys. A lot of women like you? I live a dangerous life. Dangerous men fit right in. I like you more and more each day, Shepard. Anyway, how may I help you, Commander? Is there anything I should know? You have unread messages at your private terminal. Morden would like to speak with you over in his tech lab. Anything else, Commander? That'll be all. I'll be here if you need anything. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. Well, we can check our messages real quick, and we have a message from Elizabeth Bainham. She was actually a character we met in Mass Effect 1 on Pharos. She was a researcher with Exogeny who was actually on... She wasn't completely fired, but she was on probation. Some sort of probation period uh, disciplinary action for her speaking out about research on the Zeus Hope colonists. Hey Shepard, I heard about what you did on Ilium, and I wanted to thank you for helping out Zeus Hope one more time. We're surviving, if barely. Most of Estageni left, but I stayed behind as an attaché and to make sure that nothing was up to the Thorian. We don't need that problem again. Also, I'm really, really sorry that I shot you. I'm pretty sure that I said that, but I just wanted to reiterate it. A good luck and thanks. Zeus Hope is alive again because of what you did. Sincerely, Elizabeth Bainham. Now, a few episodes ago, we actually met Shiala, who was an Asari commando once in service to Benezia. We met her back in Mass Effect 1 on Pharos as well, near the end of our mission on Pharos, and she gave us a cipher for trying to understand the Prothean beacons. But we actually helped her out on Ilium two years later in this game, actually, and we actually helped her renegotiate contracts that actually subjected the colonists to potential medical procedures that they may not feel comfortable with. Let's go ahead and mark that as red. We did manage to renegotiate the contracts and hopefully the people at Zeus Hope will have an easier time moving forward and hopefully the contracts will be a little bit more medically friendly to the folks there. But let's go talk to Joker real quick and see what Seth Green has for us. We gotta have those snappy one-liners, baby. Oh, another dangerous alien aboard, Commander. Thanks! Why can't you collect coins or commemorative plates or something? Because this is more fun, love nuts. That's why. I assume everything's going well up here? Good for now. Fractured my thumb on the mute, but I think I made my point. What do you think about the people we're picking up? Well, about the ones you went out with last. Well, it seems like Garrus has finally worked that stick out of his butt, but now he's trying to beat guys to death with it. I can't believe I like the old Garrus better. Zaid is like you, but takes checks. As long as it's not my money, we're good. It's just my opinion, though. There's really no need to go spreading it around. I always find it weird how my nose looks when I'm in the face-to-face -face conversations. That's it for now. See you, Commander. Like, it looked okay in character creation, but honestly, it looks kind of weird in conversations, so maybe something that Moz will take care of. Or, if I feel so inclined, the Mass Effect remaster. I don't have any plans of that for the time being. Let's talk to Morden Solus and get his loyalty mission. I figure that now that we've gotten almost all the crew members, once we recruit Samara and start doing the loyalty missions afterwards, Mordens will probably be the first non-DLC character loyalty mission that we tackle out of respect to his actions trying to cure a plague in the Gozo District of Omega, which 
Given the coronavirus, the COVID-19 pandemic, it seems pretty appropriate. So for the time being, let's talk to Morden and find out what his request is. Shepard, important news. Know you're busy. Have to deal with the collectors. Planning attack. Too important to wait. Just receiving data. Still processing, analyzing likely scenarios. Not sure how to begin. Too much intel. You remember our talk? My work on genophage modification? Why don't you refresh my memory? Personally, led a team, created new version of genophage, released it onto Chanka, other colonies, re-stabilized Krogan population. Nice job. I can see why Cerberus brought you on board. Very difficult, yes. Complex work to stabilize population. Mistake could have wiped out species. Glad to see you understand. Had to be done. So what does your old job have to do with needing my help? Blood pack mercenaries captured former team member. Malin, last seen on Tuchanka, might torture him, make an example. Recovering Malin would be a personal favor to me. Do you think they found out your team updated the genophage? Unclear. No way to determine until we get to Tuchanka. We'll go to Tuchanka and see if we can find your team member. Appreciate it. My assistant, my student, want to see him safe. Malin last seen outside Erdnot territory. Scouts might have seen Blood Pack. Talk to them or Clan Chief. Sounds good. Now, as Morden has ties to the SDG, and because he's actually been to Chanka, he does have an understanding, a working understanding at least, of how the clans work. But they mentioned Clan Erdnot. We actually met Erdnot Rex back in Mass Effect 1, and the Elusive Man told us that Erdnot Rex was trying to, you know, trying to rebuild Krogan society. So, but for the time being, I think we're going to go ahead and head down the elevator, and we are going to get some debriefs going. But first, let's check up on Rolston and Patel. I just got a message from my wife. I've been listening to my daughter's giggle over and over. <laughs> That's so cute. When this mission is over... I'm going to give her the longest hug she's ever had. This might actually be the thickest accent that I've seen from Merlston. Kind of, uh, you know, breaking the accent masking. I'm not sure if this is to mean anything with regards to where he comes from, since in the 22nd century, humanity is pretty much all over the fucking galaxy. You know, we pretty much reproduce like jackrabbits. So we're kind of everywhere now. But let's talk to Garrus real quick, just to get some of his, um, you know, just want to ask how the calibration is going. See if he's made a nuke in his free time. Shepard, need me for something? Have you got a minute? Can it wait for a bit? I'm in the middle of some calibrations. Talk to you later, Garrus. I'll be here if you need me. Alright, have fun, buddy. But well, we can actually talk to Thane Krios and debrief with him real quick. Since he's our new crew member, he's going to have a lot to say to us, so... Get your pen and paper out, folks. Because we... Are about to begin a lecture section. He's got his weapons lined up on the shelf. He's an ex-assassin, but it seems he's working again, and... He's probably going to be contributing his talents towards finding the Collectors. But let's find out more about his religion, his, his views on killing, and his relationship with the Hanar. Do you need something? Well, we can also ask him about Normandy upgrades. Before that, though, let's talk a little bit more about Drell religion as well as um, the Drell and Hanar special relationship. Have a few minutes to talk? Certainly. We haven't had a chance since I joined. When we met you, you said you were dying. Yes. I thought you'd want to know more. You don't have to worry about the rest of the crew. My illness is not communicable, even to other Drell. It's called Kepril syndrome. And as soon as I say that, I pretty much choose the option that goes into the personal conversation, but... Oh well, we can work around that. So, a little bit of context, Kepril Syndrome is pretty much the Drell's version of Cystic Fibrosis. The difference between those two is that Cystic Fibrosis is caused by a mutation that affects how moisture is exchanged between the mucous membranes on our airways and the tissues around our airways. Whereas Kepril Syndrome is caused by an infection. It's caused mainly by Drell moving over to an environment that they're not acclimatized to. So they become susceptible to an infection, which, you know, can become fatal. In Thane's case, unfortunately, it's progressively fatal. Are you going to be alright till the end of the mission? I should be fine for another 8 to 12 months. 
The more time I spend in humid environments, the faster it progresses. I think it's safe to say that by the time my body is incapacitated, we'll be victorious. Or dead. Either way, I won't be a burden to you. I would still be a little bit concerned because we're going to be bringing Thane on missions to different planets with different atmospheres, different weather conditions, so that's potentially going to affect him, but hopefully he'll have his breather on. Not always, but I'd like to imagine that he's probably taking care of that somehow. What exactly is the problem? My people are native to an arid world. Most of us now live on Kaje, the Hanar homeworld. It's very humid and rains every day. Our lungs can't deal with the moisture. Over time, the tissue loses its ability to absorb oxygen. It becomes harder to breathe. Eventually, we suffocate. Can't they do something about that? The Hanar have funded a genetic engineering program. They should be able to adapt us. The project has only been running for a few years. I don't believe my body will still draw breath by the time it bears fruit. Then don't live on Kaje, or use breathers. Drell have a close relationship with the Hanar. We rely on each other. The best we can do is keep our homes very dry inside. Is there anything we can do here? Normandy has a state-of-the-art medical bay. No, thank you. It's being attended to. If the finest medical minds in the Hanar illuminated primacy can't solve the problem, I doubt your ship's medic could. Thank you for your concern. Trust me, this won't affect my performance. Do you need something? You mind if I ask you a few questions? Not at all. The Drell live on the Hanar homeworld, don't they? Yes. I know many think the Hanar are difficult to understand. It's just that they're very formal with those they don't know. We know them quite well. If you ever get close enough to a Hanar that they tell you their soul name, you would find them warm. I thought that Hanar only let very close friends know their soul name. Most of my commissions were for Hanar. I grew close to my regular contacts. Soul names tend to be poetic. A Hanar known for its cynicism might take a name that means illuminates the folly of the dancers. Hanar talk using bioluminescence. That's more of an obstacle than their politeness. True. Many Drell have had their eyes genetically modified to perceive their higher frequency flashes. I had the treatment. I can't tell the difference between a dark red and black, but I can see ultraviolet light as a silver color. When you pray for the wicked, who exactly are you praying to? That depends on the circumstance. To find my target, I speak with Emonkira, Lord of Hunters. When I act to defend another, Arashu, Goddess of Motherhood and Protection. And when I have taken my target, I speak with Kalahira, Goddess of Oceans and the Afterlife. Oceans and Afterlife don't seem to have much in common. Consider, the ocean is full of life, yet it is not life as you and I know it. To survive there, we must release our hold on land accept a new way to live. So it is with the death. The soul must accept its departure from the body. If it can't, it will be lost. It's moving from the material world to the afterlife. Okay, I can dig that. I didn't know that Drell had many gods. That's one of our older beliefs. Many embrace the Hanar and Kindlers now, or the Asari philosophies. The old ways are dying. There are so many ways to interpret one's place in the universe. Who needs the wisdom of our ancestors? The younger generations don't believe they can help us fathom genetic engineering, orbital strikes, or alien races. We need to have the best equipment possible to take on the Collectors. You have any leads I could chase down? My old contact network often located rare equipment for me. Would you like me to get in touch with them? Let's see what they've got. So Thane actually has an upgrade for our probes. But we are not going to, be able to get that at that time. I'm actually going to save up and use the iridium that I have for other stuff. Weapons and such. Let me know if you want to pursue that. I'd rather put iridium towards an upgrade for my weapon systems as well as anything else that may require it. For my gear. We can wait on the probes for now. But I believe that's all we can really get from Thane for the time being, so let's go ahead and move on. I should go. I shall return to my meditations. Alright. And I'm not going to cover the Codex entries with regards to the, how I did it with Mass Effect 1, my Let's Play there. If I do get around to it, I'm probably going to go through Codex entries all in one sitting. So, it might take several videos, but we'll see where we end up. I don't know if I want to voice secondary entries, but since there's no narrator, I guess may as well. Hey Shepard. I'm not really sure what to do with myself. 
Not much call for thievery aboard a ship. Not a lot of people go in and out of Dr. Chakwa's office, other than to get medical attention, I mean. I hear you shared a drink with her. That's really nice. I imagine with all that's happened, old friends are becoming a luxury. Gabby and Ken would make a great couple. I just doubt they'll ever realize it. Come back later. I'm sure I'll have more to talk about. Alright, peace out. So Rush gonna head down. I don't think the crew members down in the engineering area they need to say to us, that's noteworthy. Maybe like at least one conversation or two. Ambient type. Jack has a loyalty mission, we're not doing that just yet. Grunt, I don't think he has anything, let's check with him. Shepard. Just checking in, making sure you're acclimatizing. Humans talk too much, like the tank. Come back later. Did Okir give you any imprints about the Collectors? I see blurry ships, guesswork about strength. Nothing to help pick a weak spot and tear. Okir spent all his time on old hatreds. Whatever he had, it was used up when he made me. That's all for now. Shepard. Alright, so for the time being, we don't get much from Grunt. We're gonna have to wait a bit. Let's get an ambient conversation from Ken and Gabby. So, Gabby, what do you think of our new quarry and boss? Ah, she, she's right over there. Ah, she can't hear us with her head in that bucket. Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful bucket. The whole suit is lovely, quite snug in all the right places. You know I can hear you. <laughs> Funny. Shepard, what can I do for you? Have you got time to talk? I really need to clean up this engine. Maybe later? I'll let you work. Talk to you later. Alright, let's go ahead and move on. And we're talking to Zaid and maybe get a couple lines from him. I don't think he has anything noteworthy to add, though. Shepard, I was just waxing goddamn nostalgic. Hopefully a line about Hanars, but... Me and a buddy were hired to take out this one guy, Matthias, I think. Hell, I forget. Turns out it was a trap. We got jumped by a hit squad. Two Batarians, a Krogan, and a Hanar. Damn jellyfish nearly choked me to death. Wore a neck brace for weeks to cover that up. Haven't underestimated a Hanar since. I think you and, uh, they would agree on a few things about Hanar. Ever been to a Batarian prison? They don't trust you enough to sell you into slavery. That's where they send you. In there you got two choices. Bash your head open on the wall. Or kill everyone between you and the exit. I should let you go. Talk more later, Shepard. Alright. Peace out, buddy. We're going to head up. I believe that's all the crew debriefs, so I'm going to head up to CIC. And we're going to call it there. I think that's everybody, actually. So let's go through. Jacob's got his mission. Morton, we've talked to. Check. Miranda had her mission still there, so she's not going to say anything to us for the time being. Check. 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 Yep. Yeah, I think we're good. Alright. I well, want to go ahead and thank you for tuning in, folks. This is a great tree jam, so I want to wish you guys a happy day, night, evening, afternoon, wherever you might be in this universe or the next. Next time we pick up, we're probably going to do Samara's recruitment mission. Go through that and get yet another person added to our crew. Have a much have a much larger contingent for taking on the collectors. But until then, stay safe, folks. Have a good one, and I will see you around.